The next person, the next speaker here uh, this morning is Greg Barber. Greg is the executive director of the Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii, often called NELHA, which is in Kona, it's an aquaculture facility. Greg has been involved in Hawaii's economic development for 35 years, and I've had a long standing relationship with Greg. I used to have a farm at Nelha. So it's with great pleasure I bring Greg up to tell us all about the wonderful things happening at Nelha. Greg Barber. Thank you, Jim, for that uh, nice introduction. Um, I think that Jim and uh, Jason have really done a great job in putting this together, and I think it's really opportune time for us to uh, have this conference and talk about uh, really sustainability uh, for Hawaii. Uh, that's kind of a big area that we focus on. Um, uh, let me tell you a little bit about our technology park, and we basically provide resources to uh, businesses in Hawaii, um, and it's uh, two main focuses, is uh, renewable energy and aquaculture, but I'm just going to talk about the aquaculture and, and ocean science uh, part of this. Uh, next slide, please. Um, oh, I forgot. So. And I was talking to someone and they told me, you know, Greg, you're supposed to start a presentation with a joke. And I, you know, I have a bunch of jokes, but I think it was Tom Leonard, he's with Hawaii Technology Development Corporation, he's a big resource here. And he says, yeah, you gotta start it with a joke. And I said, yeah, I got a bunch of jokes, but I don't have any really good jokes. I got a bunch of uh, dad jokes, you know? but those are no good. Nobody wants to hear a dad joke, but actually I got more than a bunch of dad jokes. I got a database of, that's my best, <laughs> huh? That's my best technology joke. That's the best I can do. So Jim said they're gonna make a bloopers one. I hope that doesn't make the bloopers uh, video here. Um, so anyway, uh, so we are the uh, Natural Energy Lab of Hawaii Authority. We administer a 900-acre technology park in Kailua Kona. Uh, we also have, um, I think, six square miles offshore of a research corridor. Uh, we're there because of some very unique resources. Um, one is that there's a lot of sunshine there, the highest area in the coastal U.S. Um, we have pristine seawater. Uh, that we pump on shore, um, and the water is pristine, um, probably like very few places in the world because we're in the, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, we're away from Honolulu, and we're on this, uh, you can see the lava flow there that came down um, on the, uh, this side of the screen, that's 200 years old, so we're on and actually, we used to be one of the larger um, fish ponds in Hawaii before that lava flow came down 200 years ago. So we're, there's no soil in Kona, and so there's no rivers. Uh, the the uh, rainfall is probably 15 inches a year, so it's like a desert, and there's no runoff into the ocean. So this is some of the most pristine, pristine double-A uh, class waters in the world and we pump that on shore and uh, we provide uh, land and, and seawater to the businesses. Next slide please. So this is uh, just a kind of an illustration of where we are. We're about 40 years old. We're probably halfway through our development phase. We have, <laughs> that's a blooper too. <laughs> so <laughs> So, um, so we got another probably 20 years. We, we probably have about 250 acres left, so actually we're starting to run out of land. And next slide, please. So what we're focused on, next slide, please. So this is kind of an area that 
gives you an idea of what our main uh, focus is. And it's really the ocean economy for Hawaii. This is where we're trying to reband ourselves. Food security, which is aquaculture. Ocean technology, which is offshore ocean technology. But a lot of the new aquaculture businesses do use a lot of ocean technology. Energy security, I'm not going to talk about that. And then ocean conservation, which is really linked to with um, the food security and ocean technology. But that's just kind of an idea to give you an idea of what we focus on. Next slide, please. Uh, so here's a, a close-up of, uh, of our park, and uh, it shows the aquaculture companies in, um, in purple, and uh, orange is the available land that we have left, and there's a list of, I think when you see the video, you can see, you can go through all the businesses there, and they're all listed. Uh, probably, um, I would say 40%, maybe 45 or 50% are aquaculture, and, um, and so it's a big part of what we do. Um, next slide, please. So this, this is the important part of who we are. Uh, and the top of the slide says that our seawater system is the only one of its kind in the world. Uh, we have the capacity to pump over 100 million gallons a minute of seawater onshore. We currently pump about 1 billion gallons of seawater onshore per month. Um, that's a lot of water. Our water is from the surface. We have three main intakes, and then we have three deep seawater intakes, which uh, go down as deep as um, 3,000 feet deep. So the, that water is very cold. It's uh, 4 degrees C. Surface water is, is warm. It's like the surface water that you, you see and when you go swimming. And so we have this uh, massive seawater system that we can pump water anywhere in the park, and that's why a lot of the, the uh, businesses thrive. Mainly the businesses there are hatchery, the, the shrimp broodstock businesses are there. We have oyster hatcheries there that supply oyster seed uh, spat to uh, Pacific Northwest. We have companies that supply um, uh, Manila clam seed to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we have uh, a fish hatchery uh, onshore and they grow the fish offshore in the cages. And uh, then we have some other companies, algae companies, but uh, a lot of the businesses are hatcheries. Uh, next slide, please. So we're a state agency. I, I didn't mention that. We're unusual in that we uh, we receive no funds from the state government for our operations, so we operate like a business. I think that's a big part of our success. Uh, we uh, generate about five and a half million dollars a year from the businesses in the park, and that's from the rental of land to the 55 businesses, and then our other big revenue source is the seawater system. Uh, we, we provide seawater at cost, so there's no benefit, uh, a cost benefit to us, uh, 20, 000, 20 cents per thousand gallons. So it's a, quite a low rate. You probably pay $4 at home for fresh water, so that's really low. And, uh, you know, our idea is the better the businesses do, the better the economy does, the more jobs we create, and that's our main mission. So until recently, perhaps five years ago, we were um, mainly just, uh, a lot of people say, a crappy landlord, you know? We leased land and we sold seawater. And what I mean by that is we didn't have any programs until five years ago to help businesses, uh, you know, entrepreneurs and develop businesses, no programmatic kind of program uh, to support the growth of new startup business in Hawaii. But we decided about five years ago to start up an aquaculture accelerator and focus our increase on aquaculture. And um, we were seeing a lot of uh, activity in this area that we were noticing, you know, the glo global demand for aquaculture had been growing. Federal government was seeing uh, more opportunity in, in this area. You're seeing a lot more venture capital move in the area. And we have a really strong base of mentors in in Hawaii from the aquaculture business. And, 
and it's really part of a sustainable Hawaii. So we focused on that and we hired Hatch, uh, which was based in uh, Norway. And uh, they had a global accelerator there in Bergen, Norway. And uh, they had one in Singapore and then they established one at uh, Host Park. And recently uh, they decided to move their global operations to Hawaii, to Host Park. So that's, we're really, um, we, we're really pleased that they did that. Uh, next slide, please. So we finished our first phase. Our phase two is starting now. We, we got another uh, round of funding from the federal government. Uh, and we're looking at growing this um, aquaculture accelerator into a self-sustainable uh, operation over the next four years. Uh, we're looking at another 75 companies. Uh, and uh, I failed to mention that the first accelerator, a, a big part of it was uh, to have an, a follow-on fund, a venture fund. So if those companies do good and they come out of the accelerator, then there's money there to take them to the next level. And Hatch raised uh, $8.4 million, of which I think we had a 25% share. Uh, the new uh, phase two is they're raising uh, an additional $40 million for the follow-on fund. And they're also adding uh, workshops, uh, innovation workshops, ideation workshops. The Aquaculture Accelerator, I think, is three months. They, uh, they provide $100,000 to the businesses that make it into the accelerator, uh, $50,000 cash and $50,000 in-kind contribution. And, uh, but they take a, a, a position, equity position in the company providing that support. But on the ideation workshops and the, the innovation workshops, uh, there's no, no equity position. They're about, I think, a month long. Uh, we just finished one. Hatch just finished one with 10 companies. I think four of them for, were from Hawaii. Very small businesses, and it's just helping. I, I was really impressed. I think it's really the kind of support we need to provide to local businesses. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows of Cool Haven. Uh, I think uh, one of the uh, people here at, at UH Hilo is a part of that. And, um, you know, they grow, I think, trout uh, upcountry up Maui, and they were a participant in that. And I, I, I think they, they were really excited by that. I, it really gets the people motivated, and that's the kind of support we need to give to the small businesses in Hawaii. So I'm pretty excited about uh, having Hatch for another four years. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the um, Department of Agriculture, Aquaculture uh, Division, uh, which is run by Todd Lowe, that probably most of you know, uh, those are people in Hawaii, uh, did a study, um, I think I just finished up a couple of months ago, but they hired Hatch to look at how can we grow restorative aquaculture better in Hawaii? What can we do? Uh, to grow that, that portion, and as Jim and others have mentioned, there's hundreds of, of, uh, of uh, old uh, fish ponds in Hawaii, ancient fish ponds. I, I don't know how many are in existence now, but it's probably only a handful. Um, but So we have this strong cultural foundation, uh, unique, unique location, and now we, you know, we're starting to get this R&D um, infrastructure going, uh, which can, I think, really help it, help those companies. And I was going to, I was going to mention that some of the companies that came out of Hatch, Minotech, um, they started at, at Host Park and they moved to Kauai, the Kona Bay, uh, Sea Warden, Jala, uh, they are all focused on optimizing ponds, uh, looking at measuring the biomass in the ponds so you can adjust your feed accordingly. Uh, A and B sensors looking at uh, pH, exaplex looking at toxins, uh, Montana micro, microbial, uh, and NS2 looking at uh, nitrogen sensing and feedbacks looking at oil vac oral vaccines. So, um, you know, so there's there's a lot of movement in this area of technology and developing technology to help aquaculture, but those are also helping uh, land-based businesses as well. Uh, next position. So this, next slide please. 
so this so they came up with six areas uh, that we should focus on in Hawaii if we want to grow restorative uh, aquaculture and and these are the the six areas I, I totally agree with them I hope that the um, Department of Agri Agriculture and Aquaculture Division top folks uh, can can get some traction and get some money and kind of organize people. I know that the UHC grant program is really trying to focus on these areas and trying to organize the aquaculture industry in Hawaii, especially um, <clears throat> the local smaller businesses. And so I'm, my point is I'm optimistic. I think we're going in the right direction. I think we're making a change. And I think this this conference is just another part of part of that. And uh, next slide, please. So last thing I'll say is we do have space available for small startups. We have a six acre research campus uh, where we can bring people in pretty quickly. We're master permitted. We could get you set up. It's already plumbed and has electricity, and uh, we we can get people in there very quickly outside or we, we have space inside, but right now we're, we're actually turning people away. We're completely full up, but we're looking at expanding and purchasing another building um, on campus, uh, about uh, 27,000 square feet. We hope uh, we can close that by the end of the year. And then next slide, please. Uh, we're looking at, ex this is our research campus in green. It's right on the point, and then we're looking at expanding to another uh, eight acres uh, just nearby and uh, two, two campuses. That's about 1,000 feet away. Next slide, please. And so we're 60% uh, designed for these two new buildings, uh, and uh, sorry, this one new building, and uh, half of it is office space, about 10,000 square feet. Half of it would be wet lab space, and. Currently, we have no wet lab space, and it's really in demand. When I say wet lab, I mean uh, seawater wet lab space. And so this would have seawater inside the building, and we'd have small areas for lease. Uh, we'd like to get UH to uh, Hilo to come over and uh, you know provide support for them and get more internships. And and I think the last thing I'll say is uh, um, you know. Uh, uh, workforce development, pathways to the future is something that we are really interested in. We had a very good meeting with Dr. Matthews at UH Hilo yesterday, and we're looking at developing pathways for uh, high school and, and college students so they can learn more about the opportunities in aquaculture. I think it really fits with, with Hawaii, and it fits with our children. and. Uh, I think that's all I got. Next slide, please. So that's it. That's, uh, that's, that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Perfect. Perfect.